Yo, what's up guys? Gecko here, and it is time to rank all of the Gen 6 Pokemon. Starting off strong, Chespin is fucking fantastic, dude. Chespin, absolutely goaded. Quilladin is also very good. I am so sick of the Quilladin slander. Quilladin is a great middle stage starter. It, it's goofy, but it's supposed to be. It's goofy in a charming way. It's a big, bulky dude. I like this guy. Um, Chestnut, I, I will still put it in B. Um... Definitely the weakest one of the line. It's unfortunate because I actually really like the design, um, but the color scheme is just so yucky. I honestly think the shiny really should be what it looked like to begin with because it loses the, that dark brown fur coloration that I think was a really nice contrast with the green. And here they just washed everything out. It's all just that, that light tan color and the white, and there's like hardly any green on it anymore. Um, it just doesn't look very appealing, but the design itself is still cool. So that's why I still do like it. It just is not as good as it could be. Um, Fennekin's fine. I mean, it's cute. I don't feel that strongly about it, but like it's, it's an inoffensive design. Brakeson, Brakeson I've come around to. I, I would have put it in F when it first came out. I, I guess my feelings on it are neutral now. Um, not my thing at all in the slightest. I think the design itself is good and fine, which is why I don't hate it anymore, but it is not for me. Um, Del Fox sucks. Terrible design. They, they really dropped the ball with this one. Froki is cute. Froki's an adorable little guy. Um, I, I, I think you can go in A. Frogadier is sick. I love this design. Like, I, I go back and forth between liking this more than Greninja, actually. Like, it, it's just, it's so sleek. Um, I actually do like Greninja's scarf tongue, but I really like the the bubbly, foamy scarf as well. It looks really good. I really like the um, like expression it has. It just it just is a really good sleek design. Um, Greninja's also very good. At, at this point in time, I think I would rate Frogadier the highest in the line. Um, obviously Greninja's still good, but again, Frogadier is just a little sleeker. Like Greninja's head shape with like the triangle spike things has always been like. I don't know. I'm kind of iffy on it. Like there's nothing inherently wrong with it per se, but that's, that's what kind of like gives me pause. I like the, I keep saying sleek cause I, I can't think of another word to describe it, but that's, that's what I like about Frogadier. Bunnelby is cute. Um, just a cute little guy. Um, Diggersby, that's a no, that's a no bro. Uh, just, I do not like this design. I hate the fur ring around, around its body. I know it's supposed to be like a construction belt, but I just don't like how it looks. Fletchling is adorable. I love this little bird. Super duper cute. Um, Fletchinder is also very cool. Um, really nice step up where it starts to get just that little bit of a cooler edge as opposed to like the purely cute first stage, um, but still looks, you know, very much uh, like it has another evolution coming too. And then Talonflame is just sick. Like who doesn't love Talonflame? Super, super cool. Definitely one of the coolest regional birds we've ever gotten. Scatterbug is... Nah, no, <laughs> I don't, I don't like the hair on its head. The, the bug itself is fine. I guess I don't like the big long hairs coming out of its head. I actually love Spuba. Like I, I almost want to put this in S, but I'll put, I'll put it here. S is, S is like too strong for this, but I absolutely love Spupa and I cannot explain why there's something so satisfying about the shape of it. And just like the way it's just like this little little bundled guy in this like fuzzy cocoon form is just really, really fun. Um, Vivian, I'm pretty neutral on. Um, it is really cool that it has so many different wing patterns. I mean, that's kind of the, the appeal of it or like the, the biggest appeal of it. Um, I like that part of it, but overall the design is just kind of meh. Um, Litleo's fine, I guess. I'd, I'd maybe put it in C or B. It's like kind of in between there for me. It, it's it's fine, but there's nothing particularly interesting about it. Um, for Pyroar, I put the the male design. I don't like the way the um, the mane looks. I think it's very creative that it's supposed to be shaped like the kanji for fire. Um, I believe that's what it is. Is it for fire, right? Um, that's very creative. Um, but the the way they actually like shaped it, like not not the kanji shape, but like the it doesn't look like hair. I guess is what I'm trying to get at. Like it's just kind of like this big chunky block around it. And I think that that was part of just the process of moving to 3D models. They were still kind of figuring that out. And like this design looks fine in the art, but it's not super conducive to 3D. It, it doesn't look as good when it's in the, the model in the game, at least to me. Um, I like the female one a lot more. I really like the big, long, like 
thing of hair coming off of its head. It looks really cool. Um, Flababy is adorable. I love Flababy. Such a little cutie pie. Um, I also really like Floette. Um, honestly, part of it is just like because of the story with AZ's Floette too. Um, I probably wouldn't have liked it as much um, without that, but I do like this line. Um, I think it's a really good introduction to the fairy type. I know people talk about, you know, it should really be grass type as well, um, which I, I, I can see it getting away with it in these forms. Um, with Floor, just the flowers are literally growing on its body. So this one, I feel like could be could be grass. But in any case, typing aside, I think that it is a really nice introduction to the fairy type and kind of what the fairy type is about. Um, even though later, or at least for like a lot of Pokemon, it's just like if they're pink or cute or food related, I guess, they're fairy type. Um, but I, this is like what I associate fairy type with, like little sprightly creatures. And then like Florgis, Florgis is like not really my thing. Um, I, again, that it's this is a running theme with C tier. A lot of the ones that end up in C tier are just because they are not my vibe. I love Skiddo. Skiddo's super cute. And then Go-Goat is great. I, I really like Go-Goat. Um, grass type is my favorite type. I especially love the animal-related grass types where it's like an animal that has, you know, plants uh, growing on it or like associated with it somehow. That's like my favorite aesthetic for grass type Pokemon. Um, so I love this. Pancham's a fun guy. Um, Pancham's very fun. I love the little leaf sticking out of its out of its mouth, just the attitude that it has. I love the pose it's in and its official art. Um, Pancham's really cute. And then Pangoro, also sick, super sick. Love the design, love the typing. What a fun idea. Um, I really like Furfru. Um, I'm just going off of the base form. I'd put it up here. I love how scruffy it looks. I love the, the spiky hair. Um, it's a good doggo. And I love how long the ears are. Um, I, I really don't like any of the makeover designs you can give it, but just in its base form, I do enjoy Furfru a lot. Esper is like a B tier for me. I didn't really like it when it came out. I think that it has gone up a little bit just because of like the lore in the Pokedex. It is very funny looking like the the blank, you know, eyes that it has all the time. The expression is funny, um, but I don't feel like that strongly about it. Um, and then Meowstic is, is like a C for me. Um, they don't have the both, they don't have both genders on here, but I'd, I'd probably put them about the same. I do like the dark blue one a little bit more, um, but they're both, they're both just okay to me. Hana just is sick. This, this was such a good idea, such a good idea for a Pokemon and such a cool design. Cause it's like, the concept is very simple. They, they easily could have just like, well, it is kind of just a sword, but like they could have easily just done like just generic ass sword that kind of floats there and it is possessed. But like they went the extra mile to actually like give it this really ornate sheath. It's actually ha has an eye on it. And then the way the, the like banner thing coming off of it is almost like a hand, almost like it could wield itself. Like really, really cool concept. I don't like Dublin quite as much. This doesn't bother me as much that there's two of them because because it's just an object that's getting possessed. So it's not like it's actually two, you know, animals considered the same Pokemon. That doesn't bother me with Dublin at all. Um, but it, it doesn't really expand that much for me. It kind of is just like two swords and the color changed. And, and I wish that it kind of did something more. Um, I, honestly, they could even cut the middle Evo. It could have just gone from a sword to a sword and shield. I think that would have worked totally fine as a conceptual step up. Um, but the design is still really cool. It's still a cool Pokemon. So I, I still put it this high. Um, Age of Slash is super cool. Um, also an A tier for me. This would be like high A tier. I do still like Hanage the most out of the whole line. Um, but just, just a cool idea. Again, like it was a really good concept from the start. And then in the final stage to actually make the sword like a creature that's wielding a shield and it's like fighting with itself as a sword is, is really fun. Um, Spritzy's cute. I actually really enjoy this design. I like how dainty it is. I like the way it just kind of like flits around. I like the like mask looking beak that it has on. This is, this is just a fun Pokemon. Um, and then Aromatis sucks. This used to be my least favorite Pokemon when we were still at Gen 6. I absolutely despise the thing. Um, I still do. It's just not good. It's not a good design. I don't think I need to explain it anymore because this is like kind of a universally hated Pokemon. It's, it's just not good. Um, Swirlix is really cute. Um, I love the concept and I love the design, the cute little face it has with the tongue sticking out. Slurpuff, I'm not as into. Honestly, I think I'd put this like 
it kind of hovers between C and D. I, I think I'm going to put it down here. That's what I'm feeling right now. Other days I might have it up in C, but I just don't really like the the head shape, the way they did the the big like I guess it's still supposed to be ears, but it doesn't really look like ears anymore. It just has like these big like balls or pom-pom things next to its head. Um, and it loses kind of the dog feel to it. Like I know the first stage isn't super dog like either, but like I wish it just had like a little bit more of a puppy look. I guess maybe it, the ears would help again. Like if they were a little bit more ear like. I don't really know how to like articulate what I would change about the design. I just don't really love how it looks. Um, Inke is pretty cute. This is this is a fun little Pokemon. Fun little guy. Malamar, um, I've really come around to. I used to hate this Pokemon when the game first came out. Like I probably would have put it like way down here. Um, I've really come around to Malamar. I've come to like how weird and creepy and sinister it looks. Like it's it is off putting, but it's like supposed to be. It's like so like sinister and alien looking, which is the whole point of it, which I really appreciate. Um, the evolution method is really like bizarre, but the idea to flip the design upside down and have it like an upside down squid is really cool and it actually works really well. We are gonna get into controversial territory here. I actually don't have a problem with Binacle. I, I don't love it. It's not gonna go higher than C, my neutral tier here. Um, but I actually don't hate this Pokemon and I think most people do. I think that it is... Very goofy. I like that they look like hands, though. I, I don't know why. There's just something fun about this design, um, even though it is two things again, which, again, is like I've talked about this in my other videos. I don't like when a Pokemon is two things at once, but the design itself is fine with me. And then this this is where I feel like this Pokemon is like really, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Polarizing. I feel like this is a very polarizing Pokemon in terms of how people feel about it. I really enjoy Barbarical. Um, part, I actually do like how much people hate it. Like sometimes that makes me like a Pokemon more where it's like if people, if to, if enough people hate it, I'm like, no, I have to love this because no one else is going to. So like I get attached to it for that reason. But also the idea is just so wild because it's like, it, you know, because it follows that Barnacle theme. And so it's like a bunch of them like together as one unit. So it kind of works in that regard, even though, you know, I don't like when it's multiple entities in one thing, but like taking that concept and turning it into this is wild because they look like hands. So it's just like this hand monster with like hands coming all over it. It has, it has its normal limbs and then it's got like shoulder hands and then its face is a hand or like its head is a hand with a face on it. Absolutely wild, crazy design, but like in a fun way. Screlp is weird to me. I've always, actually this goes down in D. I've always thought this design is very weird. Um, the head shape is bizarre. Its tail is kind of like, I don't know. I don't like how flimsy it is that it's just like, it's split into these three little like floppy tail things. I don't know. I, I'm not a fan of the design. Um, I love the evolution though. So that's what's unfortunate. It's like Skrelp is meh for me, but Dragalge is so, so cool. I absolutely love this Pokemon. Um, it probably helps that I first got into competitive Pokemon in Gen 6. And this was one of the first Pokemon that I like, use competitively, like I built a team around it. Um, so that does, you know, I have some connection to it there. Um, but even just like the, the concept and the design and like the typing too, like the whole package is just a really like unique, cool idea that wasn't like any Pokemon that we had before or since, honestly. Um, Clauncher is pretty fun. Um, evolution is way better. So this one's just kind of like, you're just like waiting for it to get to the evolution. But is a completely fine design for a crawfish Pokemon. And then Clawwitzer, dude, what what a sick idea. What an absolutely insane idea. Th this is why I love Pokemon. You take this little crawfish and the idea of like one claw being bigger than the other and you turn it into a fucking weapon. Like that is insane to me. Just wild design idea, but it's so freaking cool. Like only in Pokemon can you do stuff like this. Helioptile is a little cutie pie little adorable guy. I still don't really like how round the head is. It does not look reptilian at all, but I will let it slide because it is a lizard and it is Pokemon. They do a lot of round heads for like the cute little baby Pokemon. That's very normal. So it's fine. It's still a good boy. And then Heliolisk is just so sick. Absolutely freaking love this Pokemon. Fantastic concept to have a lizard with like a solar panel theming. Like it works so well with the animal that it's based on. And also just to then take the, you know, it was kind of just a, a normal lizard before and it had like solar panel like ears, I guess, or like things on the side of its face. 
but now to make it a frilled lizard where it looks like the sun when it folds them out because it's circular, it's so good. It's just so good. Like these are the designs that I gush about because, you know, there's, there's thought put into all Pokemon. I'm not going to suggest that, you know, there's not. But I mean, there's more thought put into some designs than others. That's just how it is. So it's like, I really appreciate the designs where you can tell like, oh, like this is big brain. Like they were really thinking about the concepts and like how to bring together all the concepts for what went into this Pokemon. I love Tyrant. I freaking love Tyrant. Something about this scratches like the cartoonist itch in my brain. Something about the way this is designed is so, so perfect for a cartoon character design. Like it's, it is perfection. I hope to someday be able to design things like this. Like, I, I don't know how else to express it, but just like when it comes to like cartoony looking animals, this is like peak for me, the way they drew Tyrant. And I don't, I don't know what it is, but I love Tyrant. Tyrantrum is also very, very cool. The Collar looking almost like furry or fluffy kind of loses me a little bit, just a little bit. I know dinosaurs have feathers, so I assume that's what they're going for. I assume it's supposed to be feathery, but it looks like fur to me. And again, that might just be the nature of like moving to 3D. They hadn't done it before. It's definitely not as textured as, you know, where we are in Gen 9. It, it all was very like flat and blocky. Um, so that might just be how my brain is seeing it. Um, but that, that's, that's why it's not an S for me, but obviously it's still super cool. It is a Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's freaking awesome. Dinosaurs are always going to be cool. So Tyrantrum is great. Amara is very cute. I like this little guy. I like the little like fins on its head. Um, the colors on it are super nice. Yeah. Aurorus is just a, a beautiful Pokemon. Like I, again, it's everything I like about Amara, but it's like amplified now because the fins are even bigger. And I love that. Like you know, gradient color across it. It looks so good. Sylveon is fantastic. Like this is just a fantastic design. Um, this is another one. My opinion on this has swung a lot since the games first out, uh, first came out. Like when it first came out, it was another case of like, not for me. Like I'm not as into the more like stereotypically like feminine cutesy kind of designs. That's usually not my vibe. And so I was like, this, this is not for me. I don't really like what they did with this, but like nowadays I'm actually like, this is a fucking fantastic design. Honestly, best evolution design. Like, I don't even, I'm not even sure if I would say it's my favorite evolution. Maybe it is now. I'd have to like look at them all and decide. But like, I think it is objectively like the best EV design overall. It looks so good. Um, Halucha's goaded. Such a fucking cool Pokemon. I absolutely love this. What is there to say about it, man? I mean, it was the first time we got a fighting flying type. Um, great type combo. Like it's just like a really, really cool combination in terms of coming up with designs for it. Um, really, really inspired. I love the way they introduced like the luchador mask and outfit, a kind of look to it, but it still looks like a bird. It still looks like an animal or a creature um, instead of just like a person wearing a mask. And the shiny is so good, dude. Like everything about this Pokemon is great. Dedenne is also S tier. I'm, I'm not one for Pika clones usually. Like, I, I don't think we need a new Pika clone every generation. I would not mind if they stopped making them. But for the ones that exist, Dedenne is so fucking adorable. Um, Carbink is also adorable. Um, really, really cool. Like, I would love to see more fairy types like this. I, I feel like I, I want to see more like Full Baby, like Carbink, where they feel like they are little sprites. They are like actual little fairies um, that, you know, fairies are supposed to be like, I don't really like when they go the route of like, it's food where it's like, you know, Fido, it's cute. It's a dog. The name is clever, but like, why is it a fairy just because it's made of bread? You know, like I want to see more that actually look like fairies from mythology and stuff. Oh dude, Gumi, Gumi is so good. Gumi is such an adorable design. And like, I have such fond memories of encountering this Pokemon for the first time. Because I went into Gen 6 blind. One of the times that I didn't look up the Pokemon beforehand, aside from what was already shown in the trailers, like the starters and stuff. Um, so I went in blind. Um, Gumi, when I got to Gumi, one, I was like, I saw the design and I loved it instantly. Because I was like, this thing is crazy. Like, it's just this little, it's this little blob with this little like squiggly mouth, super cute. And then I could not figure out the typing because it doesn't look like a dragon. That is not what you would expect it to be. So I was trying like every move in my arsenal, trying to figure out what the fuck it's typing was. 
And then when I found out it was Dragon, it was just like, it was just crazy. It's just such a good memory for me because it was so magical to go in blind and have a moment like that. You know, um, I go back and forth because it, it also is very fun to look up things beforehand and be in on like the hype of discussing the game leading up to it. So I think both ways to do it are fun in their own right. Um, but uh, going blind into Gen 6, this one of my fondest memories was finding Gumi for the first time. Uh, when it comes to the evolution, I'm not super into Slagoo. Um, it went like a little too literal with the snail thing. I mean, they are literally snails. I know that they are, but I like what Gudra does um, with, you know, the dragon theming. Like it's a snail dragon. This kind of feels like just literally a snail. So it, the typing doesn't feel as justified as its evolution. Um, Gudra though is cute. Um, I enjoy Gudra. Who doesn't really? It's just a big gooey dragon friend. Um, I like that they have a mix of the pseudos being like, you know, goofy and friendly versus like badass. Um, you know, it, it's good to have a mix of them because obviously I love the ones like Dragapult and Tyranitar, like the really cool looking ones, fucking awesome. But it's also nice to get guys like this where it's like, oh, it's just a big slimy dragon friend that I want to be my friend. Where am I going to place Clef Key? This is, this is such a hard one. Be here's the thing. Okay, D by design, it should be down here. What This is so lazy. This is the same beef I have with Comfey, where it's like, why did you make it so fucking literal where it's just literally the object with a face on it? I guess with Comfey, it's it gets just gathers flowers, I think. They're not actually part of the body. Whatever. It's still a stupid design. Um, but this is like literally just a key ring. It's just like a, a ring-shaped guy that put keys on the ring. Like... But the, but I'm torn because, like, there's a part of me that kind of likes Klefki, and, like, I don't even know why, because I'm so angry at this design, but there's something kind of, like, charming and fun about it. So I, I will move it up to D, but I'm very conflicted. D isn't, like, representative of my feelings toward it. It's more like it bounces between, like, like F and B, and because I'm so conflicted, I don't know where to put it. So I'm just going to kind of, like, stick it in here and just... Say some, some days it's higher, some days it's lower. It just depends on what I'm feeling. Phantop is cute. I like this little guy. Um, we'll put you, we'll put you there. Trevenant is goaded, dude. I fucking love Trevenant. This is one of my favorite Pokemon. This is like in my top 20. Um, again, grass type is my favorite type. And this is such a good grass type, such a good way to do it. And we have a lot of ones that are literal plants, but they're usually like flowers of some kind. Um, I guess we have, and then there's like Exeggutor, which is only kind of a tree, but it still kind of looks like a monster because it's got like clawed feet. But this is perfect. Like this is a perfect tree Pokemon. You know, the concept of combining these two types works so well because like trees are associated a lot or like used a lot in creepy imagery. Like haunted houses always have like dead trees outside and stuff like that. So to actually turn it into a ghastly tree monster, or, like a possessed tree is so good. Like it just works so well. Pumpkaboo. I also love Pumpkaboo. Dude, they killed it with the ghosts in this region. These, this is so fucking fantastic. Both of these evolution lines are amazing. Pumpkaboo also probably has the cutest name of any Pokemon. Pumpkaboo. It's, it's so cute to say Pumpkaboo. I absolutely love this guy. Gorgeist is okay. I'm not, I'm not as into Gorgeist. Um, the, the body shape, is a little weird to me, like how thin it is. And then with the, the dangly arm things, it something's just a little, little bit weird there for me. I don't like it aesthetically as much because Pumpkaboo is so, it's so shaped. It's so pleasing to look at. So I was a little bit um, off put by the evolution, but it's still definitely on the positive side of the tier list of the spectrum here. Um, still a good design. I love the Halloween theming where now the, the bottom is like a jack-o'-lantern, very fun. Bergmite is fine, I guess. It it kind of just exists. Like it's it's just a hunk of ice. Um, I I really like Avalug. I don't I don't know if that's um a popular opinion or not. Like my impression when the games came out was that people hated this and thought it was stupid. But nowadays I feel like I see more people appreciate it. So I don't know what like the overall consensus uh, consensus on it is. But I just think it's super fun. It's so goofy. It is so so goofy. It's like a table. It's literally a table made of ice. Noibat is cute. He's just a little guy. Noivern. Noivern is so, so, so good. 
This was a love at first sight Pokemon. This one, the the moment they showed it in a trailer, the, the first time they revealed it, I was like, holy shit, that might become one of my new favorite Pokemon. And it still is to this day in my top five. The design is cracked. Like this design is fucking insane. The colors, the design for like the, the head shape with the giant ears and like the big bat wings. Oh, just everything about it works perfectly. I fucking love Noivern. Um, Xerneas also goaded. The, the legendaries in general in this generation are so good. At least like the main trio, super solid. Um, I used to prefer Eviltal. I actually think I like Xerneas more now. Like what an absolutely fantastic fairy type legendary. Like what a good introduction to fairy type. Like I, I mentioned that I think Flabebe perfectly captures the fairy type. Like it was a great introduction to the typing and what they're kind of about. But this was the perfect legendary to have for the generation that introduced fairy type to get the more, you know, like elegant, powerful side of it. So you have like little sprite guys like Flabebe, but then when it comes to the legendary, it's like it has the rainbow antlers and it's like associated with like light and life. And it's kind of like this guardian of the forest-esque kind of deer figure. Um, such, such a cool Pokemon. But Eviltal is also amazing. I mean, these designs are just, just fantastic. A plus all around. It's like, it's like a super dark edgy Lugia. And that's probably why I love it. Like very similar body type and like type of creature, you know, it's almost like a bird dinosaur type of thing. Um, but it's got that red and black color scheme, which is always good. Um, and the big claws it has on the wings and the, the tail just looks so badass. Like, Everything in, in my little edgy teen brain, like that part of me that still loves like the edge and the dark shit like this is like, yes, like this is my thing. Zygarde is like an A. So like I said, I think all of the legendaries are very solid. This one, I don't like quite as much as the main two, but I think it's still very cool. It's super unique. Like it looks even to this day, very unique from any other Pokemon but still feels like it belongs there, if that makes sense. The other forms I don't really care for. Like this is kind of, I, it's a dog. Like, so I guess it goes here. Cause like, I don't hate any dogs, but it's, it's kind of a weird take. I, I know that there's, there's design inspiration behind it. And I, I cannot right now remember um, what it is, like what it's based on. There's a reason that it can turn into a dog, but it just feels weird to me. And it kind of loses something in the design where it doesn't feel like it's the same creature if the color scheme didn't match up, if that makes sense. And then I, I don't like this form. I know it's the strongest form. I know it's like the best one to use, but I don't like the design. It's, it's too humanoid. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Again, humanoid is not my thing. And I don't like the big like tassel things coming off of it. Just just not for me. Um, Deancey is fine, I guess. I think I'll put it in C. It's not really for me. It's not really my jam, but I do appreciate kind of the connection with Carbink and like taking a similar design, but, you know, embellishing it a bit, making it look like it would be a legendary. Um, so I vibe with that part of it, but it's not really, the design is not for me. Hoopa's fun. I, I love the, the trickster personality. Um, I like the, that the hoops, it kind of like wears on its rings when it's not using them. Also just the idea of having like hoops that are like interdimensional portal things is really fun. Um, this is just a cool little guy. Um, one that I usually wouldn't really care for, because again, this one is pretty humanoid, I would say. Um, but the personality really wins it over for me. Um, and then the unbound form, I, I'll put in the same tier. I don't like it quite as much, but it is still cool. I mean, it, it's crazy. It like grows six arms, but they're like detached from the body. It's, it's a wild design. And then Volcadion. I think I used to like Volcanion more than I do now. I still enjoy it. I would still say it's a Pokemon that I really like. Um, and obviously the typing is great. I mean, we wanted that typing for so long. I would still really like to see it on a non-legendary Pokemon so that's a little bit more accessible. But the idea of having this big ring of superheated water is really great. Um, and it's just a really, again, like unique and interesting design. Um, so there's all of the new Pokemon. I am going to rate the Megas as well. This, I couldn't find any tier list makers that had the Megas included with all of these. Um, so I'll do that separately after this. Um, but overall with Gen 6, I'd say there are like a lot of Pokemon in here that I feel were pretty unique. Like they did feel fresh and new and like they were doing something different with the designs than they had before, um, which is really great. And then there were some that I just didn't care for as much and didn't feel strongly about. 
But actually looking at this, there are way more in the upper tiers than I thought there were going to be. I went into this thinking that this gen I was like kind of mediocre on, but actually almost all of them are in on the higher end of the tier list, like above C. Um, so I, I, I guess I like Kalos a lot more than I thought I did. So as a disclaimer, my overall thought on Megas is that I really like the concept of Mega Evolution, like how it works gameplay wise, um, I think is very cool. Um, and kind of the lore of it, I enjoy. Um, but I think that a lot of the designs as a whole, obviously there are going to be exceptions, but a lot of the designs feel either over-designed, really uninspired, like, like they don't do anything more with the concept of the Pokemon, or both. Um, with Megas, the ones that work for me the most are when they take the concept of the Pokemon and they really like accentuate it and like take that even a step further. I don't like the ones that feel like they just kind of like tapped on extra parts to make it look, you know, more crazy or whatever. Starting out with Mega Obama Snow, this, this is one that doesn't work for me. They just made it more, more bushy. Like there's really nothing else going on here. Mega Absol is pretty good. Um, I think it's they could have done more with it than they did um but for what it is it is cool it's cool that it gets wings mega aerodactyl this this is what i'm talking about like th these are the ones that are stupid like it's the same thing but they just stuck rocks all over it to like make it look you know more more tough or make it look mega but it's really the same pokemon they didn't do anything new with it um mega agron i'll put i think up in b this is one this is one a little hypocritical to like what I said I don't usually like. Again, there's always going to be like, you know, exceptions and inconsistencies because that's how people work. We're not 100% consistent with our preferences on everything. Um, this one doesn't really do much new with Agron's concept, but Agron is already such a cool Pokemon that this one is like, okay, just like making it more bulky and armored. It kind of just works. Like I just love Agron a lot. Um, Mega Alakazam. This one... So the, the design isn't really my jam. It's not something I'd usually like, but I have to give it props for the concept. Not, not necessarily the concept of just getting more spoons. That's a little bit goofy, um, but making it like so, so like thin and like in that floating meditative pose to be like, you know, it, it lo not lost muscle, but you know, it's like all going to the brain. Like it's, it's all focused on mental power and really showing like it, it is not about physical prowess at all. I think works really well for that concept. That's what I was kind of saying before is like, it takes the idea of, of Alakazam and like accentuates it even more. So I do appreciate that about it. I don't know. I may end up bumping this one down a little bit because looking at it, I actually don't really like the design at all. I just think the concept works well. And actually let's bump this down too. I, yeah, the, the whenever I look at mega designs, I always go in thinking, I probably like them more than I think I do. And then I look at them and again, and I'm like, uh, actually, no, <laughs> I don't. Mega Altaria is cute, is very fluffy, but it kind of has the same issue that I was talking about before. I don't know. It's not that interesting. It's just, it's just fluffier. Mega Ampharos. See, I, I'm not, I'm not on the, the Mega Ampharos train and I apologize. I, no, no hate to anyone who likes it. I do understand the appeal of it. Um, but I just, I'm not about the hairdo. I'm not about Pokemon having hair. It's not for me. Uh, Mega Audino is like a B for me. It is mostly the same, but adding the little stethoscope thing, making it look a little bit more like a nurse, um, I think was a nice touch. Uh, Mega Bennett, this one's pretty good. This one is pretty good. I will put this one, I don't know if it deserves A necessarily, um, but I really like that the hands also now like, or the arm parts have zippers and the hands come out of it. I do really like that piece of its design. Uh, Mega Beedrill is cool. I think I'd still keep it in B. I, none of these I have felt like super duper strongly about to put it higher than that, but this one is very cool. Um, it works really well to like make it look even more deadly and have more stingers than before. Um, it looks very intimidating. Mega Blastoise is going to be the first A for me. Um, this, this is great. This is like, it, you know, it had cannons before, but now it's got like this big mega launcher in its back. This is one of the few that I actually really enjoy. Mega Blaziken is, is so boring. It's it's the same thing with different colors. Like the yeah, the, the idle pose is is more interesting. That's kind of fun, but like the design itself is just whatever. Uh, mega camera up looks horrible. Like this just looks atrocious. And it's sad because the having the whole erupting volcano on its back is great. Like I like that concept for the mega. 
but the rest of it just looks so fucking stupid. Mega Charizard X. Okay, this one probably uh, this one has probably got to be an A because this is the only reason I bought Pokemon X. I had pre-ordered Y when I found out that this was the Mega you get from X. I got X version as well. Um, it's it's really cool. Of course it is. This blue fire dude. Charizard turns black and has blue fire. That's badass as hell. The other Mega is very good though. So like, I don't think I would put it quite as high. I do really like how it looks though. Mega Deancey is not for me. Um, I appreciate that they embellished a lot more. Like I think the design works fine, but I don't really like it personally. It's not my thing. Mega Gallade is like fine. This is one that I, I will give props for like taking the concept further. I like that it has like a blade on its arm and like a cape. Like it's more of a hero figure now. That's nice, but this is also not my thing. I really don't like Gallade and this did not help anything. It's still very much humanoid. Um, I, okay, Mega Garchomp, I want to like this. I want to like it because the scythe hands are so badass, but I hate the chin. Why did they make the face look like that? I hate that it has a chin, like a, like a big ass human chin. I hate that. Mega Gardevoir also is like the same fucking thing. Like, yeah, she has more of a dress now than before, but like she did anyway. Like this is the same fucking thing. Actually this, why is, am I putting this in C? Fuck this. This is a stupid design. Uh, Mega Gengar is sick. Okay, this this is very good. Very, very good uh, building off of, of Gengar's concept. Uh, Mega Glalie, I do like. Um, it looks so freaky when it has this big mouth open ready to chomp you. Okay, Mega Gyarados is sick. Like, this, this one I would put up here. Like, this was a great way to build off of Gyarados. Honestly, the dark typing works really well for it. Like, even more so than the original flying typing that it has. The, the huge fins coming out of the back looks really cool. Um, it was just a really nice direction to take it, but they do enough different and like it has enough of a different, you know, kind of vibe or aesthetic while still looking very much like Gyarados that it works for me. Uh, Mega Heracross, I really like this one, but I like that it has the that shape now with the horns, but now that it has the horn on its nose, because there are other beetle species that, that do look like that. I like the huge chunky round hands that it has. Um, its ability is super good and it's mega. Um, not that that's what I'm judging them on, but it's, it's a cool mega form. Okay. Th this is, this is the crown jewel of mega evolutions. This is like the one mega that I will praise and say, this is what all megas should have been. Cause this is what, this is exactly what I'm talking about and what I'm looking for with megas that we didn't get from most of them. It takes a concept or an aspect of the original Pokemon and just like accentuates and like brings out that concept. It like evolves that concept further when it mega evolves. So it's like Houndoom had some skeletal aesthetics. It had the little skull and it had like a couple little ridges that looked like bones on its back, but it was just like a subtle part of the design to make it look more like a dark type. But this is like, now we take it, we actually like bring out the bones and it's got like this big bony plate on its chest and it's got the like, tusks i guess like the skeletal tusks coming out of its out of its body like and it looks even more like a hellhound like even more intimidating this it was like the perfect mega for houndoom and what i wanted to see from more mega evolutions mega kangaskhan is so dumb this is it didn't evolve this is not an evolution it's dumb i hate this the, the concept is not dumb it's just not an evolution the concept of the baby coming out to fight is adorable that's hilarious to me but it's not an evolution. Mega Latios and Latios are like fine, I guess. I, I don't know. These, these aren't that interesting either. I also don't like that they are the same. Like it's very difficult to differentiate. Um, the color is very pleasing, but because it's the same for both of them, they kind of just look the same. And I like how that distinct they look in their original forms. Mega Lopunny is a good concept. Um, I'm not a Lopunny person myself, but the, the concept is good. It, it, it works fine. This is the epitome of what I hate about Mega Evolutions. This is just plastering a bunch of markings and extra shit all over its body just to make it look more designed than the original version. This fucking sucks. This is the, the worst way to design a Mega Evolution. Mega Manectric, I go back and forth on. I think I'll put it like, I think it ends up being in B. Um, I, I go back and forth because like, the concept of the lightning bolt spikes and making its body look more like a bolt is very fun. And again, it like kind of does something different from what the original design does, but it also looks goofy. Like it, it looks kind of awkward that that's what its body looks like. 
So, so I go back and forth. Mega Mawile is like, it's, it's so whatever. Like it just has two now, whatever. Mega Metachamp, I hate how this looks. It, I just, I just don't like it. Mega Metagross is pretty sick. It's actually not like super different from Metagross's design, but, but it does something different with it. You know, like the new concept of it levitating and like using all its arms to attack is pretty cool. The Mega Mewtwo's, um, the fighting one, I, I'm pretty lukewarm on. I don't really love how it looks. Um, this one I do like a little bit more. Um, I think that just moving the tail to the head and having this like long antenna thing on his head, it works really well. Um, it looks it looks weird, but Mewtwo is supposed to look sort of alien anyway, so I think it works fine. Um, I really like Mega Pidgeot. Um, honestly, I think I'd put this one up here. I really like the the colors. I like that it gets the blue tipped wings. It's like just a nice little touch to have a little more color breaking up that brown body that it usually has. Um, or just like, you know, the monotone color scheme. And I also like the long, you know, hair thing that it has. Um, also, you know, looks cool, adds something new to it. Uh, Mega Pinsir is crazy. I love that it can fly now. Um, actually, this probably deserves to be, well, I don't know. Like for me personally, I don't like the design enough to put it in A, but I, I really appreciate the concept. I really love what they did with it. I like that it's flying and it looks like way more intimidating. Like they, they really did well with this one. Um, I just don't really care for it personally. Um, honestly, it's mostly like, I don't like the, the spikes coming off its wings and through the carapace on the back. Like that's a weird design choice to me that I don't really get. Um, and the eyes I don't like quite as much. Mega Rayquaza, this is, it's honestly sick. Like it's, it's so cool. They, they never should have made it. This thing absolutely should not exist, but the design is fucking cool. Um, Mega Sableye, great concept. Um, I wish I liked the design more. It's kind of just, it's just Sableye standing behind a gem. So the design is meh, but it looks like it's like hoarding it. Like it's, it's treasure. Like I like that piece of it. Um, but the design is blah. Mega Salamence does not look good. Like this was just a mistake. Just now we have Roaring Moon. Don't ever touch this thing again. Mega Sceptile is pretty cool. Um, I probably don't like it as much as you'd expect me to based on the typing. It's my two favorite typings ever, but I wish we got Grass Dragon on something else that was not Alolan Executor or this. Like, I don't know. It, it's fine, I guess, but it kind of just adds... It just adds more markings to Sceptile and now the tail is pointy. Like it's just kind of boring to me. Mega Scizor honestly feels like a downgrade. Like I feel like it's original pincers are cooler than these. Um, I'm sure people disagree on that. I, I can see why these would look more intimidating, but I just think this looks like a downgrade from regular Scizor. Mega Sharpedo just adds a bunch of scars all over it. Like it's the same thing. It's stupid. Mega Slowbro is hilarious. This is fucking hilarious. I don't, I don't care that it's just Slowbro inside of a shell. It's fucking hilarious. Uh, Mega Steelix is sick. This design is really good. I actually, I do like this one. I love the crystals coming out of it. I want more rock Pokemon that are based on crystals instead of just stones all the time. Like it looks so cool. Mega Swampert is good. Um, I'll put it in B because it's not like amazing, but I do like the new take to make it super like chunky and muscular. Actually though, like honestly, comparing it to what else is in this tier and what's in A tier, I think I actually would move it up. Yeah, Mega Tyranitar fucking sucks. Fuck this. Mega Venusaur, I'll put in like C. Um, I like that the plant gets a lot bigger and kind of overtakes it, but that's really all there is to say about it. It's kind of just the same thing again. Yeah, there's like a few tweaks I would make. I think yeah, I do like Heracross, but I don't, I don't think I like it as much as anything else in this tier. Like, I think I would move, bump this one down a little bit. And then, like, I think Audino actually probably should go down here. I actually am surprised how many ended up in A and B tier. I thought I disliked most of them. Um, like, overall, in like, compared to other Pokemon in general, I'm actually curious how they'd stack up if these were all on one tier list. Because I was kind of rating them, like, in comparison to other Megas. But in any case, yeah, so there's all my rankings for all the Gen 6 Pokemon. As always, let me know if you agree, if you disagree, if you have beef with any of my Pokemon opinions, uh, I would love to hear it down in the comments. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you next time for Gen 5. That's going to be a long one. Buckle up.